Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is managing HTTP timeouts inside of Power Automate Desktop. Let's go. So let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. So in a previous video, I discussed how we can go ahead and call a cloud flow from, from Power Automate Desktop. And I've got a, a link here to that video I'll include it in the description as well. And so I recently had a customer that was using this approach, but we're getting some timeouts from PAD as the cloud flow was taking too long to process the required you know, logic. And so there is a, a simple solution to deal with this, which we're going to cover in this video. But I also wanted just to highlight some of the differences between cloud flows and desktop flows when it comes to HTTP and some timeout. So I'm going to expand on this topic and talk a little bit about cloud flows just so that you understand the differences. And then there will be a solution for how do we deal with desktop flows. And the good news is it's quite simple. So stay tuned for that. Now, one of the things I did want to talk a little bit about with cloud flows is how it can use a different model than what we're going to talk about in pad. And so just in general, when you talk about HTTP, it's good to understand like why certain things happen and what you can do to avoid them. Now, this is an article I wrote uh, a little while ago. It's uh, just a, a blog post and it does talk about logic apps, but the behavior in Power Automate is exactly the same. So don't get too hung up on the, the term logic app in this context. And then I also have the link here that describes this in more detail. I'll put that in the description as well. So the core issue here is what if you have a cloud flow or in this case, a logic app that's going to call another HTTP endpoint. And maybe that's another logic app or maybe it's, it's um, just some other API that happens to be long running. What you see today, if you go ahead and use like the standard HTTP action out of the box is that the logic app or the cloud flow that's calling the other service will time out after two minutes. And this is, you know, just generally a, a good practice, right? You know, no one wants to sit on say a web page and, you know, have it load and take three minutes or longer and think that that's a good experience. And so that is kind of a, a good thing in some cases because people would have like some bad behaviors otherwise. The other thing about it is that whenever you do have a connection that is open, like that's taking up resources on both sides of the pipe, right? You've got essentially a client that gets locked up because they're waiting for a response. They can't do anything else. And the other thing is you've got say a server side that has to go fulfill those. These types of architectures won't scale well if there's a lot of volume from that perspective. So inside of Cloudflows and, and Logic Apps is we do have this HTTP webhook connector, which allows you to deal with these types of situations where you might have a long running process. So what you would typically do, and this is, I go into more details in this article, is you essentially send a request over to the Logic App or the, the API. And what you do is you register an endpoint, you register a webhook. Basically you say, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and send this, do some work, the uh, consuming logic app or API will send back like a 202 accepted. And as part of that, you include a URL that they can subsequently go push data back to. And meanwhile, this logic app will basically register this endpoint and essentially be waiting for the response itself. Now, while that happens, you could parallelize some other work activities as well, but you're not actually blocking. You don't have a, a connection open to the service. Um, and so it is more proficient from that perspective. Now, unfortunately, we don't have this with Power Automate Desktop. So if you think about the difference between cloud flows and slash logic apps and a desktop flow, well, desktop flow is running on a device. There isn't an entry point in where you could even go ahead and register this sort of webhook. This works because this is a SaaS service. This is a PaaS service in the case of logic apps. It's running in the public cloud. There's a public endpoint that you can go ahead and call. If you were calling something external to your local network where you had pad running, how would it come back in, right? So there's some other architectural constraints there as well, but like that's probably the biggest one itself. So we can't actually go ahead and do this the same way inside of a desktop flow, but I wanted to make you aware of this because you should try to use this type of approach if you're dealing with cloud flows. Now, the other thing before we get into the pad specific stuff is that 
don't just rely on pad and say, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and create a longer timeout to avoid any sort of disruptions. Also think of ways where if you are, you know, calling a cloud flow from pad, which is kind of core to our overall scenario, is maybe there's some optimizations that can take place in your cloud flow itself. And so one that comes to mind is concurrency control. So if you go to an apply to each loop, click on the ellipsis, cl click on settings, you're gonna see this experience here. Now, by default, concurrency control is off in Cloudflow. So basically everything's running in kind of like a single, single line, single threaded process. Now, with parallelism, what we can do is have multiple or concurrent executions. So, and you do have to be careful with this feature. If you have like in order delivery scenarios, then you probably can't use this because you're gonna see some messages or events being processed out of order. But otherwise, what you can do is you can turn this knob from zero to 50. Now be careful when you do this, um, do testing, because uh, you don't want to get throttled because you're hitting APIs too hard. But what you can start to do is parallelize your work from that perspective. So this is something that if it meets your scenario, do it, experiment with it, test it, and then see if you can get more performance out. So instead of processing one by one, maybe you're processing five or 10 or even 20 at the same time if you do have a loop inside of that Cloudflow itself. So wanted to make sure that you were aware of this as well. Now, if we think about sort of the core problem itself, when we have Power Automate Desktop and we're trying to call say a Cloudflow, we do have this feature right here. This is kind of the crux to the whole video here is that we have a connection timeout feature that's below the advanced dropdown. This is metered in seconds. And so what we're gonna see when we run the demo, it will time out the first time because we're gonna use the default settings of 30. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna then bump this setting up, run it again, and then we're gonna see how it behaves from that perspective. Okay, so let's start in our cloud flow that we're gonna call. This is very simple. I have a very simple payload. I'm expecting a hello parameter, and I'm basically going to respond back with, uh, with the value that's passed in, kind of like an echo prompt. Then to simulate load or simulate processing, we're just gonna go ahead and introduce a, a 60 second delay here. So roughly this should run in probably 62, 63 seconds. And uh, naturally with Power Automate Desktop, just having a 30 second timeout, it's gonna timeout at 30 seconds and this will fail. So this is kind of our, our cloud flow. And then here is our very simple desktop flow. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and call the invoke web service method. Uh, do note when you do this, you're going to have to replace some encoded characters. You're gonna see a percent to F. Gonna to need to replace those with the forward slash. Uh, I do talk about this in the video that I mentioned earlier inside of uh, this content itself. Our advanced, you know, we're gonna use the default here. 30 seconds, so let's go ahead, let's run this. I'll pause the recording just so we're not watching paint dry here, but uh, we'll see the, what the error message looks like after. So sure enough, what ended up happening was we get this fail to invoke web service, the operation has timed out, which is expected in this particular scenario. So let's go ahead, let's just open this back up and let's go to advanced. Let's now tweak this setting. Let's put this at uh, just 70 seconds just to give ourselves a little bit of breathing room. And let's go ahead and run this. I'm gonna pause the recording again. And this time we should see a positive result. There we go. So at uh, a minute and four seconds, we got a response. In this case, we've got a status code of 200 which means okay. And then we've got uh, our response here, hello Kent. So that uh, is the demo itself. Pretty simple, pretty simple, you know, solution to solving timeouts, but I just wanted to give you folks some additional background as well, because I think it's good to understand the differences in the architecture between cloud flows and desktop flows, and then just knowing sort of when to use which strategy, because pad will, pad will work much different because it's running on a local device versus cloud flows, which is in a, a SaaS service essentially. All right, so that concludes another video on the channel. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy.
and you're obviously on YouTube, so appreciate you watching this video. Likes, subscribes, comments, always welcome. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week on the channel. Take care. Have a great week.